Hello and welcome to an episode of Ask Vixen. It's a new little mini web series kind of thing that I'm working on. Um, basically all you do is ask a question or a couple of questions and I try to answer them off and on throughout the week uh, with a nice YouTube video. Either of me explaining it or of me showing you how to do it. So today we're talking herbs. Um, there's a couple of different things that you can do with herbs. Uh, you can make mojo bags, you can make tea, and, oops, wrong jar. You can make little herbal version of uh, witching jars, which are fun. I like to make those from time to time. You can set them around your house or whatever. But anyway, <clears throat> Basically, this question comes from a lovely young lady named Alyssa from one of my Facebook groups that I'm part of. She wanted to know about sachets and charms and, you know, kind of like, why do you use certain herbs versus others and that kind of a thing. Um, the short answer is that herbs are actually used for a wide variety of purposes, from actual medicinal purposes such as peppermint, which is really good to treat indigestion, upset stomach, that kind of a thing. <clears throat> or the magical properties, which these here are mojo bags. Um, you can see they have sigils on them. There's even a little bit of personal stuff that I actually included in here because these actually hang next to my door. Um, this one's for peace. This one's for love. And that's what I want to instill in my home. So these are actually personal little mojo bags that have a little bit of my hair in them. Um, just to give them a little added effect. So that way peace and love within my home are always present. Although sometimes it's not. Uh, <laughs> it goes into something completely different though. Anyway, little jars like old candle jars for example like this one this is an old candle jar or this one which is what i'm going to be using today to show you how to make one of these little jars these are old candle jars all you do is melt the wax out of them clean them up really nice and then you can actually use them for making like little herbal witching jars or basically whatever you want you can even use it to remake a candle but anyway, moving right along. Um, herbs have been used for a lot of different purposes throughout history. That's nothing that's new. I mean, that's kind of more or less common knowledge, if you will. But um, I have four different herbs that are present here. I have rosemary, devil's shoestring, peppermint, and all-natural sea salt. I also have some tea bags here, but that's going to go into herbal teas later on in the video. <clears throat> the other thing that you're going to need is either a tablespoon, or if you're nifty like me, you can find these at uh, various different stores. Pretty much any place that sells um, jars or loose herbs or anything like that, you can find these. All it's about the equivalent of one tablespoon because I don't work a lot of the time when I'm doing witching jars I don't actually work with specific measurements. I actually go by parts So if you if you have equal parts for something such as this um, It's one part peppermint one part cinnamon one part rosemary one part sea salt Okay Just so that way you guys can see this there's all kinds of cool herbs in there. You can see the salt. Um, but you can also use sachets. You can use the little velvet bags. There's all kinds of stuff that you can use to put these herbs in. Um, and you can find, well, you can find most of these either online or at your local grocery store, to be honest with you. Devil's Shoestring, probably a metal, metaphysical shop or somewhere online ebay is a good place to look for that um 13 moons is another good place to look for that so keep your eye out for various different herbs 
So what we're going to do today um, is basically I'm going to show you how to make a protection sachet. I'm going to show you how to do a little herbal witching jar. And I'm also going to show you how to do an herbal tea. Okay. Um, for all intensive purposes because I do not have the space available at this point in time to be able to actually go through the entire process of making an herbal tea I'm basically just going to explain to you and show you briefly what you have to do um, by going the route of an empty tea bag so let's get started huh So there are a lot of different things that you can do with herbs. We've already established that. You can cook with them, you can make sachets with them, you can make witching jars, you can make all kinds of different things with herbs. Herbs have a variety of different purposes from magical to medicinal as well as just, hey, they smell good kind of a thing, okay? Which actually takes us into aromatherapy. But we're not going that route today. We're actually gonna keep it simple. Um, there's three main things that I wanna talk about today. That's making a sachet, making a small witching bottle, and making some herbal tea. Okay? Now, for herbal tea, you don't need a whole lot. You just need a very small amount. This happens to be peppermint, and this happens to be a bag it yourself tea bag. You don't need a whole lot to make an herbal tea. Um, it doesn't have to be overly extravagant. It can be very simple, like white willow bark and catnip which makes an Akaway tea. I call it an Akaway tea just because white willow root is actually uh, what aspirin is derived from. And catnip is a mild muscle relaxer that works with the body and not against it. So when you mix these two up, you end up with very light nutty flavor. By adding some honey, you can sweeten it up and actually you end up with more of a honey flavor a lot of the time than you do that nutty flavor. But makes an awesome tea really good for an herbal bath too for those of you who are interested in herbal baths that is where you can actually pull in a muslin bag muslin bags are also really cool for uh, people who don't have a tea sock but um, prefer to actually take their tea and steep it inside after the tea kettle is done um, which is a really cool idea They're, they also make really cool mojo bags I have one sitting right here. This one's for love. I actually keep this um, up next to my door. So that way people that cross the boundary only bring in love. And the other companion that I have to it is peace. These mojo bags actually have sigils on the front. That's what these symbols are. These are sigils. It's just to help amplify <coughs> and give a specific purpose <coughs> to the mojo bag. Your intent obviously is the biggest portion. But what we have before us right here is actually a witching jar. This is an herbal based witching jar um, that I actually made out of an old candle. Uh, my husband melted the wax out of it, cleaned it up really nice, and now I have herbs in it. This here is actually um, equal parts it's four parts of everything. It's cinnamon, devil's shoestring, sea salt, rosemary, and peppermint. Uh, this is actually for purification, attracting love, and protection. I'm a person that is all about practicality as well as being multi-purpose. Um, I don't like things that are very pinpoint specific unless that's what's required or that I feel is required. Now, a lot of people think that magic is all about candles and spells and things along those lines. But in actuality, magic is really simple. Um, it doesn't have to be overly extravagant, such as in the case of the sachet. There is nothing overly eccentric about a little sachet. Most people will actually even overlook it, not even thinking about it. These are really good if you want to take just salt, sea salt. Put it in here, sit it up on your windowsill. Um, you can take a piece of devil's shoestring, stick it in here, hang it up next to your door. Or just take the devil's shoestring and actually sit it above your door if you have that ability. 
Now, a lot of people think Devil's Shoestring is absolutely terrible because, oh my god, it has the, the word devil in it. But no. <laughs> Devil's Shoestring is actually for protection and luck as well as um, attracting a raise or a new job. One of the things I want you guys to be aware of, though, is that when you're doing things like the witching bottle or the sachet, do not be afraid to tear down roots. Roots have a tendency to come very long and honestly that's about all you need you know make it fit what you are using as for the rest of this that we have up here we're going to actually just go ahead and basically what's in the sachet is equal parts of everything okay equal parts sea salt rosemary peppermint and of course the devil shoestring what I'm going to show you, however, is actually how to do the herbal witching bottle. Just because. Just because. Alright. So, we're going to take that little piece of double shoestring I just showed you and put that into the jar. Then we're going to take the salt and add that to the jar. It's always good to make sure that you uh, stay in stock with your herbs. Because otherwise you can end up running out very quickly. But I'm not going to use a whole lot of anything for this really. It's, well, it's all going to be one part. This bottle here can actually do up to three parts because of its size. The uh, larger one that I showed you can do up to six. Also, just as a quick tip, mason jars usually come in three parts. The actual jar itself the inner ring and the outer ring okay you want to make sure that your inner ring on top of a mason jar is on there properly before sealing down the outer ring because what you want is that airtight seal um, even though this isn't boiled and the caps not popped up it's still a pretty good airtight seal and they make wonderful holders of herbal uh, of the herbal nature um, also make sure that you keep your herbs in a dry cool place preferably away from sunlight because it can wear on your herbs as well as uh, stimulate the release of any le leftover moisture and you don't want that collecting in your jar you also don't want to take your fingers and shove them down directly into these types of jars either because your the natural oils on your hands and all the grody places your hands have been will end up inside the jar and it can end up contaminating your herbs. That's why I prefer to use a scoop or a tablespoon of some sort and of course you can always jiggle the jar to where the herbs come down closer so that way your hands aren't going inside the jar. Always make sure that your labels stay together and make sure that your lids are on tight because you don't want stuff falling everywhere. Now then from this point, now that I have all my herbs in place, I can actually go ahead and I can light a couple of candles if I want to. I can add this to my altar. I can add a spell to it. I can add a sigil to it. I can decorate the heck out of this thing with glitter, paint, and ribbon if I want to. And the cool part is I can set it right out in the open and most people won't even know. They'll just think, oh, that's a really pretty potpourri. When in actuality, you got yourself a spell going on. These things are awesome because they allow energy to be released at a more constant rate, which is really good for those long acting spells, such as protection and purification a lot of the time. You want those to be extended out. You don't want them like pinpoint specific at a specific time for only five minutes. You, you don't want that. You want it stretched out. Um, the other thing too is of course you can cook with herbs um, you can do all kinds of things with herbs I love herbs uh, one of the things that a lot of people aren't aware of is that you can actually bless candles with herbs uh, you can either make like an herbal mixture like this and then have it laying out in a very confined space and then roll the candle around in it or in the case of this which used to be a candle you can stick another candle in there with the herbs and let everything mix together 
and this is like the shorthand version of herbifying a candle or as most people know it as is dressing um, and now my candle is covered in herbs <laughs> and ready to go you can also do it with oils as well um, I advise not mixing the herbs with the oils though too much unless that's exactly what you're intending to do and you have something very specific that you intend to do with them but other than that as you can see it's very simple it's it's not really all that elegant and it's practical which is the most important thing to keep in mind when you're practicing magic is to keep things practical keep them simple you don't want to overdo yourself um, one of the other things real quick that I want you guys to keep in mind make sure you have an herbal reference book at all times um, it really does help for instance in this particular book it has everything really nice and broken down it tells you what the name is what the um, the scientific name is any planets that it's associated with and just in general what what it's good for um, and any deities that it's associated with as well as the lore and usage so something like this is really good to keep around when you're working with herbs just to be on the safe side because you don't want to ingest things like foxglove belladonna mandrake anything that's toxic really um, it's not good to ingest things that are toxic and you definitely don't want to spend the money that it costs to go to the ER so make sure that you're savvy about what you're doing uh, always double double up on your research just to be on the safe side it never hurts and other than that the most important thing of course is have fun and make sure that your intent is behind what you're doing um, magic is in everything that we do guys whether it's cleaning the floor whether it's washing the dishes cooking food there is magic everywhere to be found and incorporate herbs um, turmeric is really good for balancing out high cholesterol as well as balancing blood sugar and it's also happens to be pretty good magically too so find out what the magical purposes are incorporate that into what you're doing find the medicinal purposes of it incorporate that into what you're doing and you're actually going like this and creating a complete circle with what you want to do so anyway this is lady silver vixen i'm signing out for now and please keep an eye out for more of the ask vixen series for those of you who are interested in participating you can either make a recorded message and post it as a video response where you're asking specific questions or you can do it in the comments private message me or if you're one of my facebook buddies please feel free to private message me okay anyway guys please be uh be blessed if i could talk screw mercury being in retrograde <laughs> anyway guys have fun and research 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 blessed be namaste goodbye